Hello people, this is Mark from Cars Change Works. Guys, hope that you are well. I'm going to talk about uh, the three phases of destruction as far as the knock is concerned today. Now, I know that for a little while, maybe a couple of weeks or so, I haven't made any videos about the NARC. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the NARC is such a heavy topic to discuss and talk about. Uh, that is the one. Just give myself a bit of a break. And also not to completely uh, bombard the channel with just NARC. There's a lot of other stuff that myself and Laura are looking at doing. <clears throat> As you've seen... There's going to be a little bit of an expansion in the in in the channel, and there's going to be many more. So that's the one reason. The second one is, I've just completed one quite intense little study uh, training course that I finished, and then uh, just slightly before that I finished an incredible uh, intense three-day training course. It was really hard going, and uh, I've got to the point where I've decided I'm going to pause this training bet for a while. Because uh, I need a bit of a break. So that is the part of the reasons why um, I haven't made anything on the knock. Because it's been pretty heavy duty. Uh, from Laura's point of view, I, I know that she wouldn't mind me saying this. Uh, she's recently moved. And uh, she's also looking at coming over to the UK uh, December, January time. Uh, so there's been a lot of things going on there in terms of... Uh, getting the visas, the packing, the flights, there's a lot of things going on there. Uh, so she's been mainly focused on that, so that, that's okay. But today, I want to talk to you about this thing called the three phase. Um, why am I saying phrase? Phase. Um, approach that the NARC will use to completely eradicate your confidence, how they will gaslight you, um, and how they will actually... Uh, destroy everything about you and then in the next video which might be a two-part series maybe three-part I don't know because there's a lot there for them to remain in control and how they kind of win you over um, right from the beginning so here we go let's talk about this for a second any relationship that becomes romantic or emotional I've been in a few um, more recently um, you know, when I got married, that was an interesting time. And there's been other friendships and stuff like that that has been kind of emotionally charged. And the what I've noticed is that, you, you know, from a Knox perspective, you want to get in there. You want to you want to win your prey over. So you, you have to be nice. You have to be friendly. You have to be confident. You have to be understanding. You have to be courteous. All these things, as a friend of mine would say, you've got to be normal. And this particular friend also suggested that a narcissist will never date a narcissist because they understand what's being said. And there's like this secret code language there's something about the knock language that only a knock can understand so when a knock and a knock are looking at dating one of them will bail out because they know they gonna be getting involved with a knock where there are say normal innocent folks you know the the nice ones you and me when we are approached by a knock you don't know that they are a knock because they come across superficially as nice and friendly, courteous, and they're the best thing since sliced bread because they are everything that you could ever want. And how they do this, they might just completely love bomb you all the time. They will make you feel like you're the best thing that has ever happened in order to win your confidence, win your trust, trip you up emotionally, not, not, not for destruction purposes, from how they want you to understand that but they will trip you up from their agenda point of view and there's a massive difference between the two so they will come up and they will be nice let's just put that word in there they will they will be nice to you so once they've got your emotional 
emotionally hooked, Kink, gotcha, boom, and, and you now magnetized to them, their personality, their character, their niceness. You magnetize to them. So in the first phase, this is like the pre-phase, and then the first phase would be where they completely idolize you. You know, they will make you feel like the king of the universe or the queen of the universe, depending on what gender you are. And this particular chap on who I've done this research on, he, her, he, or, he, he or she done a really good job on looking at particular phrases that might be used. They've obviously given just a handful, but you need to understand that these are the kind of phrases that you will hear in the relationships that you are involved in. Should you be the opposite side, if you're the prey, this is what you will hear or similar to this at least. They will say something like this, you are my soulmate. And of course that resonates with people who are looking for that soulmate. That eternal bond kind of thing. I've never met anybody as nice as you. Wow. You're amazing. You understand me better than anybody else before you. All my friends kind of understand me, but you. You're in a different class. You're in a league of your own. So to speak. Am I your only friend? You're my only friend. We don't need anybody else. It's just you and me. We'll be together forever. Because that's my commitment to you. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But these are the kind of phrases that you would hear in phase one where they completely idolize you. And of course, for the innocent party, the prey, these are the kind of things that we want to hear. Because we're looking for that soulmate, we're looking for that lifelong partner, we're looking for the, the, the person who we are going to spend the rest of our lives with. Someone that we can share the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. And the, and the knock is an absolute linguistic behavioral chameleon that blends into the background. You do not see where they are or what they're doing. But there is always, and I emphasize, there is always a hidden agenda that they will not tell you about in terms of why they're being so damn nice. Because they want to idolize you, because they want to destroy you. Phase one. So once they've established that phase one is over, it might take a week, it might take 10 years. The narc is a very patient individual when it comes down to setting the scene, making sure that the foundation that they want to operate from is so strong, so secure, everything fixed in place, like a chess game. And then once they are satisfied that they've got you, listen, you are hooked by this point and you can't see nothing because you are completely love struck. You, you are emotionally completely blind. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. So once they get there and the relationship is established and uh, everything's going swimmingly as far as you are concerned, the prey. And the knock is going, everything is going swimmingly, as far as they're concerned. But of course, they have a different agenda. Your agenda might be, man, this is the, the most perfectest person in the world. Next step for me is engagement. The next step after that is, is marriage. The next step after that is going to be family time. And the next step after that is life eternal. Bless, sunshine and roses. Mm, uh, I don't think so, right? So now the narc has got the chess game in such a place where they can now decide what's my next move. My next move is going to be one step up according to their agenda. And this is it. 
they will start to devalue you. Now, in a normal person's life, that they might be thinking about things like, well, these things just happen. We, we've, got, we've got two personalities and this personality here and this personality here. We see things different. We understand things different. We experience things different. My education system is different. My traditions, my culture, my background, all these kind of things, they're all different. So we are bound to see things different. From the Knox point of view, it is this. You are feeding me. You're feeding me. So whilst you as the individual are, are displaying intense understanding that yes, there is going to be arguments. Yes, there is going to be strife. Yes, there is going to be makeup and hugs and kisses and all that kind of stuff. Yes, we understand all that. But from the Nark point of view, because they are so emotionless, they think, oh man, I'm being fed here. Because as soon as you start playing in the game according to their rules, their pitch, man, you've lost before you've even started. Now, this might be a week down the line. It might be 10 years down the line. It doesn't matter, but it's down the line nonetheless. And then they will come up with things like, why are you so insecure? It's your fault that we're arguing. Can't you see it my way? Stop being so damn sensitive. Grow up, man. Come on. Really? Can't believe you've said that. That makes you look so stupid. I can't understand why you can't understand that. What's the matter with you? It's your fault, man. Come on. Don't you see it from my point of view? Understand, it's my feelings that you're talking about here. And phrases down that kind of a line. Now, of course, you might turn around and say, ah, oh, these things are normal. If we look at the, the group dynamic, when you build a group, you get the forming, storming, norming, performing phases. Yes, totally so. Rightfully so too. But here it comes, the storming bit. You're feeding the knock. Because they know then they've got you and they're playing these emotional chess games. And as soon as you bite, you're hooked, you're dead. Emotionally at least. So they will start to devalue you. You your opinions, your beliefs, your morals. They will make you take responsibility for their actions. They will quiz you on everything. And that's when the gaslighting just escalates to another level. Because it's the next phase. Right? The next thing what they will do is they will... Do the bit where they think, now that I've got them devalued, demoralized, insecure, lack of confidence, now it's time for another move in the chess game and they will start exaggerating their authority. And then they will say things like, I know exactly what to do. We need to do this. In fact, because you can't really make a decision, maybe you need to do the following. And then they will start controlling you. They will start manipulating you. They will start bullying you. More so in this devaluation process. This phase where you're already broken. You don't realize this at that point in time. Not necessarily at least. And then they will start doing all these little slide moves to try and trick you even more you have to remember at this point you can't see much because all you see is just where you are and you're focusing on how you feeling and nothing else around about you matters because you can't see it because you spun in this web 
And once they realize that they can make the decisions and by completely disowning you, taking away all the responsibility from you, as far as decisions are concerned, because they have to be in control. Remember what the knock ideally uh, wants to achieve, complete and utter dominance. As soon as they've got that, tick, time to move to the next phase. The next phase is destruction phase, this discarding phase. The time where they let you know you were a nice meal. Thank you very much. I'm satisfied. You are now useless to me. Next victim. Let's go and find them. And this is what they will say. You have a normal conversation and you will go. The, the knock will go. Sorry, the knock will say something like this. It's your fault that we've broken up. It's your fault we broke up. This is the reason why you cannot maintain a relationship. It's your fault. Everybody hates you. Now I understand why you're so unhappy in, the, in, in life. Ha! Huh, I've wasted my time with you. A words to those effect. You don't realize that I was the best thing for you. No one else can love you like I can. You're a lucky individual having someone as amazing as myself. Good luck finding anybody that can match me. That kind of stuff. And at that point, my friend, you are that hollow you are that disengaged with who you are. You don't even know who you are. You are just empty. You are broken shell. Brittle. And yet, here's the biggest problem with all of this. All of that has happened with your consent. Your okay. Your approval. Because of how effective and sly and cunning the narc is in winning you over. Model calling you, making you feel like you're the king or queen of the world. And now gradually, slowly, efficiently, they break you down. And for most people, you just accept that this is part of the relationship building process. And you do nothing about it because you're not aware. But from the Narc's perspective, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You are playing the game, their game, their rules, their pitch, their way. And you're completely disempowered, in prison, and there's nothing you can do about it. I wanted to bring you this so that when you find yourself in set kind of environment where you are hearing this utter hype of emotional uplifting, this love bombing thing. When you feel like you're being told that you are the king or queen of the universe. You might not even know this person for five minutes, ten minutes. And they're telling you that you're the love of the world their world be careful when you move from that and now all of a sudden you're starting to be devalued you are in phase two and when they start telling you that you can't make decisions you can't take responsibility it's your fault you're now migrating into phase three and before you know it phase four is you're on your own no one around about you. Because the Nox agenda, if you look at the, the, the series from before, they try and cut you off from everybody, your support system. They will do everything they possibly can to isolate you in their environment. And what a cold and lonely place that is. And so when they get you to that phase, they will drop you. You are then nothing. You are no supply left. Because they've sucked the life out of you. Destructive. 
that's all I want to say in this particular video here is be aware of the phases that they go through this very cleverly orchestrated chess game that is based on emotional manipulation and emotional bullying and whatever you do my advice is be aware pay attention notice what you notice in terms of how you feel in the relationship if if the person who loves you truly they will keep you on an even keel yes there will be ups yes there will be downs but when it when it starts going down and down and down and down and down bam you've had it a normal relationship as far as i'm aware not that i've know too much about that i've had a couple of relationships that seemed normal you will always want to build that person up encourage them support them protect them and these kind of things but as soon as that peak comes and, and you start going on the decline and you're feeling hollow in yourself then you know that you are in a toxic abusive relationship and what a difficult Maya mod environment it is to swim out it's hard hard work so there you go my friend I know this has been a bit of a longish video but I feel it's really important that we understand how the knock works how they plan strategically to destroy you so if you've enjoyed this video and you find it helpful or, or you've learned something please put that in the comments box below in the, uh, the YouTube admin, you know exactly what it is. Share, subscribe, hit the little bell, you know, all that kind of stuff. Tell all your friends and family to do exactly the same, especially if you are aware of people who are in narcissistic relationships. But for now, this is Mark from Kind of Strange Works. I'll speak to you soon.